Uh, hi, this is Telemeter, and this is a quick video on how to use um, the uh, this little utility called Map File Builder to build your own sample maps in Reactor uh, using your own samples and how to import them into an ensemble. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use uh, this Reactor ensemble um, as an example for uh, importing the sample maps. Um, the, the ensemble is called uh, Grain Cube by Richard Devine, and uh, it consists of four Grain Cloud instruments Grain Cloud 1, Grain Cloud 2, Grain Cloud 3, and Grain Cloud 4 that can all run in parallel and can be manipulated in a bunch of different ways. Um, and uh, if you import your own samples, like I have in this particular example here, um, you can create some pretty cool soundscapes. So uh, this uh, ensemble I made out of about, uh, you know, I don't know, 12 or 13 um, sound files that I took from a game soundtrack I did a few years back. Um, and uh, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> So you get the idea. I mean, obviously this is pretty ambient sort of soundscapey stuff, but it's pretty awesome. And, uh, you know, you can put your own samples in here, run this thing for 10 minutes, uh, record the whole thing and then resample the output, cut it up and do whatever you want with it. Um, you can make some very interesting soundscapes with this and, uh, even, you know, little one shots that just sort of randomly occur that can then be resampled and put into a sampler. So it's very useful and well worth the effort to set up. Um, so, uh, let's do this from scratch. So you want to select a MIDI track, drag reactor in, um, and, uh, you know, like I said, we're going to use this, uh, ensemble here, divine sound grain cube. Uh, and I'll put the link to download this. This is free by the way. So that's this, those are the samples that uh, it comes with. Um, but if you want to put your own samples in there, um, this is how you do it. You uh, go up to here, hit, uh, I'm going to close the browser for a second, hit this uh, icon here. This turns on edit mode that allows you to edit the sample map, edit your snapshots, etc. Then you want to hit this icon, opens up the sample map editor, and uh, you're going to want to go up here, hit sample map, import, replace. So you need a sample map to import. And that's where this utility comes in. So go out to your finder, uh, double click on the map file builder, and it will open up and it will ask you to choose a map directory. So that's where you're going to put the finished sample map. And then the sample directory is the, the folder that you want to pull the samples from. So I'm going to use the same folder for both this folder on my desktop called game noise loops. So I'm going to choose that as a destination for the map. Choose that as the source of the files. As you can see, there's just, I don't know, like 13 files in there. Hit create maps, and then it creates this map game noise, grain cube files, blah, blah, blah. So that's the map that we want to import into the reactor ensemble. Um, so we'll go over here and hit import, replace, navigate to the folder that the, uh, sample map is in, hit okay. And then there they are. So, uh, as you can see, it has mapped the sample zero to 12 across the keyboard which means I have fewer samples than uh, were originally in there. I think there were originally 29 samples from zero to 28. So I'm going to have to do a little work in the ensemble in a second to compensate for that. But before we do that, the next thing you want to do, whenever you import a sample map into Reactor, you almost always want to do this. Select all the samples and then check embed. Um, 
what that means is that you're now saving the samples with the ensemble. So if you ever move the folder that has the samples in it somewhere else, or you lose the samples or you delete them or whatever, it won't matter. These samples are going to be saved with the instrument. It takes up more disk space, but it's way better in the long run because, you know, this instrument will always be the way it is. You won't have to worry about losing files, et cetera. So then it'll ask you if you want to create a local copy and you can save this under a different name and, uh, you know, you're good to go. So usually that's mostly all you have to do. But in this case, with this ensemble, there's a couple other things you have to do. First of all, that sample map was only for this one grain cloud. Secondly, uh, this grain cloud is set to select from a minimum of sample of zero to a maximum sample of 28, but we only have 13 samples. So we have to change this from uh, to 12. So it will select from sample zero to sample 12. If you go back to the sample menu here, you'll see that 12 is, is, the, is the maximum, the highest sample I have, and then zero is the lowest one. So there's zero there, and then this one is 12 here. So you have to make sure that your uh, random sample map selector or your random sample selector is choosing between zero and 12. Um, the other thing you have to realize, and this is true in a lot of ensembles, reactor ensembles, this is true in some of the Twisted Tools stuff, it's true in a lot of things, is that there's more than one sample map. There's one for each instrument in the ensemble. So there's actually four grain clouds, grain cloud one, grain cloud two, grain cloud three, and grain cloud four. So there are also four sample maps. So you, if you really want to do this right, you need to import your sample map into all four instruments. Uh, and then also embed that takes care of sample, sample map for instrument two. This is the sample map for instrument three. Embed. This is the sample map for instrument four. Open and select all and embed. So now you can close the sample map editor. All your sample maps have been changed. Uh, remember, you need to change the selection here. Um, sample selector so that it's only selecting from 0 to 12. And now when I hit play uh, or turn the reactor ensemble on, it should uh, populate each of these four sample players with samples from the sample maps I just imported and randomly select uh, amongst the 13 samples. Uh, for some reason. All right. I have to set the range again and snap back. There we go. So now it's functioning and using the samples that I made instead of the samples that came. Um, so, you know, the next thing you probably want to do, uh, just, um, you know, just to quickly add on here is, uh, you're going to probably want to initialize the, um, snapshot. So you want to go to this camera icon and then hit bank one and then hit edit init bank. And then you can store, uh, You can store a snapshot and then that snapshot, the, the thing about that that is important is that that snapshot then saves these settings um, for the sample range. And, uh, you know, then you can tweak any of these other parameters and store as many snapshots as you want. And uh, you will have uh, an instrument that is configured 
specifically for your samples. Um, you know, if you have a sample map with 100 samples in it, you're going to want to, you know, change this number to 99 or whatever. Um, if you have a sample map with three samples in it, you're going to want to change this to two. Uh, so <clears throat> just be aware of that uh, and make sure you embed your samples uh, in the sample maps when you create them. And then come up here, hit File, Save As, uh, save the ensemble as uh, under a different name and it will save everything uh, with the samples embedded in it and you now have an awesome granular soundscape instrument that uses your own original sounds for source material. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope this was helpful.